This is your News Now Sports. Former LCC and Finley golfer Shelby Warner is back home for the holiday weekend. After leaving UF, Warner moved to New Orleans to continue pursuing her dream of becoming a professional golfer. Our Katie Gill, who sat down with the former T-Bird, who opened up about qualifying school and life since graduating. After graduating college, Shelby Warner did what most do. She left college athletics and entered the real world as an accountant for Marathon. But it was there something just didn't feel right. I had a membership at the Finley Country Club where we practiced all through college and I would go play once or twice a week and it, some, it just felt like I wasn't done. It just felt like I needed to be out there and give myself a chance. After taking a leap of faith and quitting her job, Warner took up golf full time, playing on small tours over the last year, even giving Q school a go, which she says was a huge learning experience. I did learn a lot my, um, about myself playing with these girls because it wasn't I wasn't on a team anymore. I was with myself and it wasn't it was a lot harder to pick myself up. I didn't have a team to pick myself up anymore. It was myself. So I had to figure out how to talk myself out of the bad days. And that's what's been uh, my struggle the past first year or so into this is figuring out how to cope with the bad days and without um, having a team to bounce you up. The former oiler says golf has turned into a family affair. Her mom even plays now. She says she wouldn't be here today without the support from her parents. They're my biggest fans and it means so much to me that they are okay with this. I, I don't know how I would feel or how I'd how I would be if they weren't supportive of this. So it's it means the world to me that they want to support this and want to support my dream into this. Shelby's next venture comes on Monday when she'll try to make the cut at the Marathon Classic at Highland Meadows Golf Club in Sylvania. In Lima, Katie Gilhuli, your News Now Sports. To the diamond we go. There's a new twist to the Grand Lake Mariners annual youth camp this year as it's been expanded from Salina into St. Henry. The two-day camp has stretched the Mariners outreach into southern Mercer County, giving more kids a great learning opportunity with Mariners players and coaches in attendance as instructors. While the organization hopes the kids learn, it's also about having fun as they closed camp today with a home run derby. First year Mariners general manager John Dorner, who is also longtime head coach of the St. Henry baseball team, was instrumental in bringing the camp to Wally Post this summer. I think it gives kids uh, a camp like down here in southern Mercer County gives kids around here maybe a chance that uh, closer to home to go to a camp um, and as opposed to the one at Salina and sometimes you know the dates just don't work out when we offer the Salina camp so by having two camps it's really given kids a, a great opportunity. Uh, the young men uh, the Mariners team are a great group of guys um, they have volunteered their time they've they've read at the uh, local libraries to kids they visited senior citizens at the nursing home uh, uh, when they arrived, it was just a couple of days after the tornadoes in uh, uh, Salina. And so uh, the entire team, coaching staff, went out and volunteered and helped people clean up their properties. And, and so they've just, uh, they've just done a tremendous job. I'm real proud of what these young men have done. Those aforementioned Mariners in action tonight, they continue their series with the Michigan Monarchs. Top two, Tommy Seamer rings one up for the second out of the inning. He'd pitched six tonight, allowing one run on just two hits while striking out four. All the way to the seventh we go. Monarchs lead one nothing. Jack Gallagher with a nice stab at third. Throw to first is in time as the Mariners try to claw back. Top eight now, Bradley Calhoun on in relief. He feels the bunt, throws the first. It's not in time, but Luke Vonderhaar guns down the runner at the plate to end the inning. A nice play there, but not much doing for the Mariners tonight as they're shut out four to nothing. High school ball today, the Acme District 5 East sectional tournament from Bath this afternoon. LCC matches up with St. Mary's in game one. Top five Rough Riders on top and they add to it. Logan Hale blooping one into right center. That will get down. Derek Fisher waltzes home from third to make it 5-1 St. Mary's, but the T-Birds roar back. Bottom of the frame. Hale's pitch gets away. Here comes Jared Young to pull LCC within 5-2. Three batters later, it's a two-run game before Braden Tarr lines one into left. Gus Sierra scores on the RBI single to pull LCC within one. The very next batter is Nevin Stolle, and he delivers. Shooting one down the line and deep into the left field corner. The RBI double brings LCC all the way back as Tar scores to tie the game at five. Same score, bottom seven. Base is juiced for Stolly and he walks it off. A base knock into left scores Quintel Peoples as the T-Birds complete a dramatic comeback with a 6-5 win. The mid-afternoon contest sees Eli to tangle with Shawnee. The winner of this will match up with the T-Birds in the next round. Top two runners on second and third for John Frewey who grounds one right back to the pitcher. A.J. Brown catches Nick Niebel too far off the bag and he's in a pickle but you will see Niebel collide with the third baseman Nathan Numbers right
right there. Interference is called as Nebel is awarded home. It's one nothing Bulldogs. The next batter is Jaden Hollinger, and the suicide squeeze is executed to perfection as Mike Nebel slides home safely. Elida doubles their lead. In the third, the Bulldogs add to it as Fruey pokes a base knock into shallow right center. Matt Adcock scores as Elida hangs on to their big lead. They win 9-5. to five. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we return, we move to the big leagues as the Indians and Reds square off in game one of a pivotal in-state clash. Full highlights coming up next. Sad news out of Cleveland today is Indians pitcher Carlos Carrasco announces that he is being treated for leukemia. The 32-year-old stepped away from the game in June after receiving his diagnosis in May. That diagnosis wasn't made public until today. The team posting a video on Twitter of Carrasco who declares this will make me stronger than I've ever been before. Cookie Strong, the hashtag on Twitter to show your support for Carlos, wishing him all the best in his road to recovery. On the diamond tonight, Cleveland begins a quick two-game set against the Reds. Top one, the Indians break the ice as Francisco Lindor flies one deep to right. This one drifts and drifts out of the ballpark. The 14th of the year for the Indians shortstop puts Cleveland in front. That lead wouldn't last though as in the bottom half of the frame Yasiel Puig answers with a two run bomb of his own to right. The Reds jump out in front. All the way to the eighth we go level at two apiece but not anymore as with two away Roberto Perez comes up big. His fourth hit of the night is a two run shot to give the Indians the lead and they wouldn't look back. Cleveland wins it seven to two. Finishing tonight on the hardwood NBA Summer League action as the Lakers meet the Clippers. The Clippers get the best of the L.A. rivalry tonight with a 93-87 victory. Eli DeGrad, Dakota Mathias starting once again for the Lakers. He plays 24 minutes, which was tied for the most on the team, and scores six points to go along with two rebounds and two assists in the losing effort, Katie. Right. Thanks so much, Matt. We'll wrap things up after the break.